talk a lot about camera gear, video editing, color grading, etc. in my videos and all of that is important to a certain degree but the actual secret to getting good shots is actually using light in a proper way and today I want to show you how you can use natural light for your travel videos. So I would say grab your camera and let's get some shots. probably heard about the first tip already which is to go out either one hour before sunset until maybe even after sunset depending on the day or for sunrise until one hour after that. Depends a bit on the time of the year and on your country. Generally northern countries have a little bit more hours that look really nice. For example I've recently been in Stockholm and there we had pretty nice light all day which was in November I, I think. So the more north you are the better it generally is. Here in Thailand for example we really just have around one hour with good light. But it's important to go out on these times as much as possible at least for your main places in travel videos because there the light just looks looks amazing like you see that right now here it's like 20 minutes after sunrise and it's, it looks fantastic the light that we get here right now of course you shouldn't limit yourself with sunset and sunrise you should also shoot over the day we'll get later into that so I will give you a few tips on how to get better footage during the day as well now the reason why sunset and sunrise is so good is at first that you get this nice orange looking light but also that the light is flat so it's easier to use a technique called back or side lighting that basically just means like the name says that you put the light at the back from the subject that you're shooting at here right now for example I shoot these plants here so if I put the sun behind it I get a really nice room light around the plants that always looks nice and especially when you shoot people you oftentimes also want the light to come from the side so that it lits up one side of the face and throws the shadow over the other side can also have a little bit of light here next to the nose because that gives it this Rembrandt lighting effect and that looks really nice it's generally your goal with lighting to generate shadows somewhere because that makes your image look three-dimensional it's like you have this flat 2d sensor and you have a 2d screen a flat screen on what you're looking the video later so essentially you only have a 2d image but you want it to look three-dimensional so that's why you have to play with light and shadows to make this image look more three-dimensional to give it a bit more dynamic so that's what I'm doing here now and now let's give it this nice backlight effect Yep, that looks beautiful. It's not like a super important shot here. It's more like showing the surrounding. We're not actually shooting a travel video today. We're just here in the morning to show you how I do it. So by the way, leave me a thumbs up because I got up at 6 a.m. today just for you guys. It's actually a good example here. We have this gutter here and there is a little bit of water drops on there. The sun hits that nicely. So this is actually a really nice texture that we get there by using backlight. Now the sun is coming from there. It hits it and I'm like in a around 20-30 degree angle to it so it's a quite flat angle but it looks really nice. I really love capturing such things like going a bit closer to it because that captures the textures of an environment. It's easy to get only wide angle shots for your travel videos with people in the foreground but also filming textures. This is actually something that many people don't do and especially if the lighting is that nice then that always comes good. So now I'm getting a shot of the whole airplane here and by the way I choose exactly the same camera angle all the time here because I want to shoot straight into the sun as you can see on every single shot it looks good just because I have the sun behind my subjects all the time. Can actually now Go to the other side of that airplane and then I can show you another shot where the sun hits the subject directly and you will see immediately that it doesn't look that good. Okay, let me give some examples here. I first get a shot now of Daniel with backlight, then with side light and then with front light and you will notice that front light doesn't look as good. So one backlight shot now. Now accidentally that was still backlighting not side lighting this uh, the light didn't hit his face at all but we still got a really nice rim light effect and the sun was like like to an angle behind him that is also something that looks really good and you don't need that much dynamic range in that case because you don't actually have the light source in the frame now the first problem that I encounter is that my own shadow is on him that of obviously looks bad so I would have to step to the side 
But now, as you can see, it looks pretty flat. Like, this is not a good shot. Even if I move the camera now, you could do it, but it's not good. Gets even worse when I shoot from this side here, because then, apart from his chin, we don't have any shadow at all. And that's really not a nice shot. So as you can see, you either always want to give it side lighting so that you emphasize his face a lot and you re really make it look three-dimensional via the shadows, or you want to use back lighting that you get this nice rim light effect. Let's get one more shot of him with rim lighting or back lighting. So that's like the very basics of lighting. Always do that, either from the side or from the back. I think you see how much better it looks. Okay, let's put that into practice now. Now Daniel will walk towards the airplane and I get three, maybe four shots of him and I will only use back and side lighting for that. Here the first shot will be a bit more side lighting. So he will walk towards that. I use a crop mode in my camera because the lens is a bit wide. I try to get a bit closer shot of him. So let's do it. That will be our next one here, directly backlit while he is walking towards the airplane. And now I'm going to film the third shot where it's a close-up of his face taking a photo of the airplane here. And this will be a strong side lit shot, but it's like the sun comes from the side because I stand here. It's still shining in his face, but because I film from his side and actually a little bit behind him, you see here around his face that we also throw a shadow here that makes it look more three-dimensional and we have a nice soft graduation over his face. Okay, I would say that's a nice shot. I want to get another shot in the same position, but now I will use backlighting. So I stand behind him and just film how the camera gets down again and he starts walking towards the airplane. Cool. Last two shots of the sequence now will be how he sits down on the bench there. And the first shot will be a bit wider to show a bit more of the surrounding. The second shot will be a close-up. And again, backlighting here, the light is directly behind him. And I will also do the same when I get close. Okay, it's not the smartest sequence, definitely, like taking a photo of an airplane and then sitting down just drinking coffee that he didn't have in his hand before. This is because we're not actually shooting a travel video for today. It's just to show you how natural lighting works. But as you can see here, this is our sunrise example. And just by constantly putting the sun behind the subject or to the side, all the shots automatically look really, really good. But I would say let's now wait a little bit until the sun is up and then I will give you a few tips on what you can do when you have harsh light, when it's not sunrise or sunset time anymore. There's also an extreme version of backlighting, which is called the silhouette shot. You most likely saw that before. It's basically the person is completely dark or you at least can't really see much anymore on the person. And then it's exposed for the highlights. And that's, for example, good if you have a sunset or sunrise and you want to expose for the sky to really show the nice sunset in the background, but you also want to have a person in the foreground. Now, we're not having sunrise anymore. We are already having the sun up a bit. This is why I will go inside that half or front part of an airplane now and then we will get a silhouette shot in there. Can you hold the camera please? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that thing already destroyed my drone today and now, oh, now it tries to destroy my head. So we're in the airplane now, I survived a little hit on the back of my head. And because it fits, let's also get another shot of him. Now we got the two shots here inside the nose of the airplane. First the silhouette shot and another one. 
And that also leads me directly to the next tip, which is when the sun is already farther up, you don't get this super nice light anymore as it is now, that you should simply go into the shade. Because the reason for going into the shade is that you want to give the light direction. At sunset and sunrise, you have the sun quite low, so that gives the light direction. But if the sun is high up, then that's a lot more difficult, which is why it makes sense to go in the shade because, because then the light becomes more directional. Well, now you can see all the light that we use here basically comes from this direction. Direction. There are also a few small windows here in the airplane. You can see that here, for example. Of course, you don't need the inside of an airplane for it. You can use pretty much every shade that you want. Every shade will make the light a bit more directional and it will also make it softer because you essentially have a big light source. It's pretty similar to having a big light in a studio that is placed close to your face. That's also very soft. So a shade or standing in the shade essentially does the same. But it is generally better to have something like a tunnel or so where the shade is a bit longer because then you can really play a bit around with the one light source that you have but if you don't have a tunnel a room with a big window or something else available then you can also use other shades and that is what we'll do now I will also give you a few examples for that so let's get out again and have a look okay bro oh. <laughs> So now we have a more general shade situation. We have a bit of shade here from the wing and we also have this bus here, which could be a wall from a house. It could be anything that's around you, but it's important to have these two things because at first now the light because of the shade only comes from this direction and it's blocked here by the bus. And now what you see is that the left side of his face throws a shade while the right side of his face is lit up. And this is again now we can shape the light. So let's get a shot of him to show you that further. So that's why I generally prefer side lighting there. Like you, you can actually influence the rim light then a little bit more about certain edges of his body that looks beautiful. But if you directly use that backlight effect, doesn't work that good. So side lighting is a bit better in that direction or maybe something like 135 degree angle, etc., where the light still hits him from the side, but also a bit from the back. That's quite nice there. So you probably noticed during this video that the way how we used natural lighting was always pretty much the same. Doesn't matter the circumstances. It was either back lighting or side lighting, which is ultimately pretty much the same because you always shoot from the shadow side. And this is actually the one thing that I wanted you to learn from this video. Natural lighting and lighting in general is actually not that complicated. When you only have one light source available, it's always that you want to shoot more from the shadow side or at least from the side because you want your shot to look dynamic. And therefore you need to give it this third dimension by throwing shadows over your subject or having this rim light effect. And what I also want to mention here, what's very important is that you should not be too perfectionistic about it now because you can't get every shot right if you shoot travel videos because it's on the go shooting and the only things that you can influence is the position of your subject also that not always if your subject stands fixed somewhere in the area or you can change your position to the subject but you have no influence over the light source when you shoot with artificial lights inside then that's a bit different then you can always move the lights a bit around and that helps but you can't do that outside you can only influence the time of the day that you're shooting at certain locations and it makes sense to plan that. But if you're already out in location and the light is already not that good, you just can't get it right, then be okay with it. If you only get 70 or 80% of your shots right, then your travel videos already look a lot better than most travel videos out there. And if then maybe 20, 30% of your shots are not well lit, this is perfectly fine because overall telling a story in your video is the most important thing. And that is what people love to watch. Aside from that, if you want to learn more about how to make travel videos, check out this video here in the corner. This is actually a pretty full guide where you learn a lot about it. So check that out. And if you found this video helpful, then please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for upcoming videos. I see you there.